Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have our next problem from the JEE main test deals with the Doppler shift. Now here we read the problem. It says that two cars are approaching each other at an equal speed of 7.2 kilometers per hour. When they see each other, both blow horns having frequency of 676 hertz. The beat frequency heard by each driver will be, and we're looking for an integer number in hertz, and they tell us that the speed of sound is 340 meters per second. So, what do we need to know here? Well, first of all, it helps to draw a quick diagram to see what's visually what's happening. We have two cars traveling towards each other. So we have car A and we have car B, and they're approaching each other with the same speed, and the velocity is equal to 7.2 kilometers per hour. Now, there's an easy conversion from kilometers per hour to meters per second by dividing by 3.6, something you should remember. If you don't remember, of course, you could do the quick conversion, but notice they picked a perfect number for that. 7.2 divided by 3.6 is 2, so this becomes 2 meters per second. Now, we also need to know about the beat frequency. You hear beat frequency when you hear two frequencies that are close together. The difference between the two frequencies will end up as the beat frequency. So we're looking for the frequency observed as opposed to the frequency of the source. Of course, you're your own source when you're listening and then you hear the, the frequency of the other driver and the difference between the two should create a beat frequency. All right, now we need to know the equation. The velocity observed, oh, not the velocity observed, it's the frequency observed. So let's get rid of that. So we want the frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source times the ratio of, we have the velocity of sound and air plus or minus the velocity of the observer, the velocity of sound and air plus or minus the velocity of the source. And it's all about finding which signs we need to use for this particular situation. So first let's think about the observer. Let's say that this is the source and this is the observer. Now notice the observer is moving towards the source, so the source is coming closer due to the motion of the observer. Now, when things are cl moving closer together, that causes us to hear a higher frequency, just like when a car passes by, it sounds kind of like this. Mm -hmm. In other words, you hear a higher frequency when it approaches and a lower frequency as it moves away. So when you approach, you hear a higher frequency. So here in the numerator, we need a plus sign to make this bigger to hear a higher frequency. So that becomes a plus. Now about the denominator. The velocity of the source. Now the source is moving towards the observer. Again, that causes a higher frequency. Now since this is the denominator, to make the fraction bigger, we need a negative sign there to make the smaller. A smaller denominator makes a bigger fraction, higher frequency, so this becomes minus. That's how you decide whether or not you need a plus or minus, simply by looking at the situation and see how the observer velocity and the source velocity affect the observed frequency. Now we can put in some numbers. So frequency observed is equal to the frequency of the source, which is 676 times 340 plus 2 divided by 340 minus 2. So this becomes 676 times 342 divided by 338. And now, of course, you would like to grab your calculator, but you don't have a calculator. But luckily, again, they picked the numbers quite nicely. Take a look. 676 is exactly twice 338. So this becomes 1 and this becomes 2. So 2 times this gives you 684 hertz. That's the frequency observed. The source frequency is 676. So the beat frequency, the beat frequency is going to be able to be calculated by taking 684 minus 676, which is 8. So as you're driving and your horn sounds at 676 hertz and what you hear from the other driver is 684, you will hear beat frequency of the difference, which is 8 hertz. So the answer is 8 hertz for the beat frequency. And that is how it's done. Wow, so eight times per second, that's a pretty high beat frequency because by the time you hit about 16 hertz, it becomes like a continuous sound. So eight hertz, you would hear very rapid oscillations.
<laughs> That's why they make the drivers go relatively sh uh, s low speed because the higher, the faster they drive, the bigger the difference, the more you don't hear it as a beat frequency. So the cars would have to be driving, uh, driven at a pretty low velocity. Matter of fact, if you slow down to one meter per second, then you'd hear a beat frequency of about four, and that you could you can hear better. Woof, 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 woof. I, it, it's hard to explain, but you hear like these sounds where you hear a muffled sound and a louder sound, muffled sound, louder sound at very rapid frequency. Eight is pretty, pretty high frequency for a beat frequency. I don't think I've ever heard that before. <laughs> Maybe we should something, set something up to try and make that, simulate that. I think we could do that. Yeah, that should be interesting. Well, you need horns that have a uniform frequency, not a range of frequencies, and so yeah, so, and they both have to be exactly the same. This is obviously a hypothetical problem. <laughs> I don't think you could hear it in real life. <laughs>